I was building on a lecture. Versus coming daily under pressure. Working on the plot and the skin. Yeah, the is at the edge of the dreams. I'm talking one. One shot for the kill. The breeze cut, freeze up. Straight drop and the chills. I'm talking. Taking over pieces and shares of all the sky high. Check the movement is here. Oh my god! Oh my god! Welcome to the capital of the Emirate of Dubai, United Arab Emirates, for what promises to be a fierce duel in the desert. It's Centurion Fight Championship, CFC number 11. Hey everybody, I'm Jordan J. Adams, United Fight Alliance. Welcome indeed into the intercontinental Dubai. Four fights to look forward to this evening, including the semifinals and finals of the CFC welterweight tournament and an all-Brazilian matchup at 170 as well. It's Centurion Fight Championship 11. Let's hit it. Weighing in at 74.9 kilos. He stands five feet, two inches tall, holding a professional record of 12 wins, nine losses. Representing Nordeste Jiu-Jitsu, fighting out of Brazil, Gerson Bilaboy Pereira. That's right, they call him Billaboy Gerson Pereira. 12 and 9, he's 5 foot 2, weighed in at 163 pounds, has a 63 inch reach, fights out of Pereira's Bahia, Brazil. And now introducing his opponent in the red corner, weighing in at 73.5 kilos. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall, holding a professional record of 5 wins, 1 loss. Representing SBG Ireland, fighting out of Ireland, Nikolai Slick Nick Grosdev. And they call this welterweight Slick Nick, and that is because he has some crazy submissions. Nikolai Grosdev, five and one, most of those wins coming by submission. Five foot eight, 163 pounds as well. Got a reach advantage over Billaboy, 67 inch reach, fighting out of Dublin, Ireland, SBQ, scheduled for three five minute rounds. This is the first of the welterweight tournament fights. There you see tail of the tape. And Billaboy versus Slicknick. Here we go. Rose Dev fighting out of the red corner. He's got the white trunks on. Pereira has the black trunks on with the blue trim on the gloves into a north-south position. And Pereira fishing for that ankle. I don't think he has it. He's going to be very careful on the ground with Rose Dev. When you look at those submissions, he does not quite have the torque that he needs on that ankle. He's got to readjust his forearms. But right now, it looks like Grosdev might take side control. And he's got that right arm pinned, too. This could be a very dangerous crucifix for Pereira. Side control with the right arm pinned. Grosdev could let that left elbow go if he wants to in this position. And there's not too much. Pereira would be able to do about it. Stepping over now, looking for the submission. Looking for the Americana. And this is an extremely difficult position for anybody to get out of when you look at someone with the pedigree of Slick Nick. He will be able to control and dominate most 170 pounders from this position for a full round if need be. The only thing that would stand him up would be the referee. See how he steps over, maintains control, continually threatening the submission. Good job by Pereira getting that right knee up, preventing mount. But he's gonna have to do a lot more than just preventing mount. He's gonna have to very have a very active ground game. He's gonna be he needs to be active off his back. I don't know what his Brazilian jiu-jitsu rank is. Suffice to say, he probably has a pretty decent belt having grown up in Barreras, Bahia, Brazil. 
He is 34 years old, so he's had plenty of time to practice his jujitsu. But again, there goes a good, good job getting out and the great reversal from Billaboy. Now looking for the choke himself. Hard to tell if, it's, if he has any depth with the forearm under the chin. A slick Nick Grosdev. Grosdev, beautiful job. Dumping Pereira down. Back into side control, looking to pin that right arm again. Liked what he had going on in the first two minutes of the round and wanted to go back there. No threat from that choke, and Pereira wisely releases. No sense in gassing that arm. Keep in mind, this is the first fight of the four-man tournament. Winner of this fight faces the winner of Yakon Gir Bukaski Yumaev in Abdulatip Magomedov. That fight coming up right after this one. That's a tough draw. Nice elbow from Slick Nick. Needing to do some damage. Referee starting to let him know he's gonna have to be more active from this dominant position and he obliges the referee with two stiff left elbows. Just a dominant position for the transferred Irishman fighting out of SBG in Dublin, Ireland. And I'm sure he brought a lot of his ground game to the Irish as well. The Irish known for great stand-up and they love to bring the Eastern Europeans over to the island for some great groundwork as well. It's a mutually rewarding experience. The Eastern Europeans coming over showing some Sambo, teaching some Sambo, and the Western Europeans teaching some boxing and kickboxing. Beautiful step over now to full mount, going for the submission now. Looking for that Americana. Perhaps the Camorra, but he is in a dominant position with 30 seconds to go in the opener. All grows dev. Slick Nick looking for that submission. Gives up on it wisely. Realized he didn't have it leveraged the way he needed to. And again, didn't want to gas out his arms. Smart professional move as this round comes to an end. Real quick break. We'll be right back with round two. Back inside the beautiful Intercontinental in Dubai, four-man tournament. The first fight of that tournament. Gerson, Billaboy, Pereira, Nikolai Slick Nick, Grosdev. Here's action from round one. It was all Slick Nick, the big dump. Takes out the left leg, side control for more than half of the round. Letting the elbows go when he needed to. Referee wanted to see more action. He let those elbows go. He was able to trap the arms of Pereira as well and do some damage in a modified crucifix. A very long, painful round for Gerson Pereira out of Bahia, Brazil. He's gonna have to go back to the drawing board. It'll be interesting to see what types of in-between round adjustments his corner gave him to deal with Nikolai Grosdev. There he is right there, Gerson Pereira and Nikolai Grosdev. Grosdev in the white trunks, Pereira in the black. Pereira circling away from, I was gonna say circling away from the power, but Grosdev has a big heavy right hand as well. He does not have a lot of knockouts on his record, but he's been able to damage opponents in the past. Nice leg. Oh, that, that was more damage, delayed result as the reaction from Pereira was about two seconds after he took the head kick. I was wondering how much torque was behind that kick and, and I was actually surprised it looked like it didn't affect him at all. And then two seconds later, he dropped. Bit of a delayed response from the Brazilian. Again, going for the ankle. That was what kind of his Hail Mary pass in round number one as well. Let me go for heel hooks and 
put some torque onto the ankle of Grosdev, but Grosdev was wise to it and had good defense. Let's see if Grosdev tries to mount or go for that side control. The side control worked really well for him in round number one. Now just some stomps and a nice kick to the knees from the Brazilian. That's legal. A la John Jones. Be interesting to see how long it stays legal though because you can take some real damage when you kick the knee in the opposite direction it's supposed to bend. And there, this time the referee had not seen enough action. And Slick Nick, unlike the first round, could not keep Pereira down. Outside leg kick from the Brazilian. Tying up though, it looks like he's still a little bit hurt from that head kick. Still not quite back to 100%. Now just kind of rope-a-doping. And shooting that left from way out, way out of town. Different zip code, another kick to the head. That time defended well from the Brazilian. But yeah, make no mistake about it, Pereira's in a lot of trouble here. Goes down again, he was rocked by that punch. Now hammer fists from Grosdev, this fight is over. Beautiful win for Nikolai Slick Nick Grosdev. And a dejected Gerson Pereira will have to go back to the drawing board. He drops to 12 and 10. Gros Dev conversely now moving up to the finals in this 170 pound tournament. There, the big punch that dropped him. That was that delayed head kick. And now just combinations from Gros Dev. Pereira simply had no answers, especially for the hammer fists. Beautiful work from the SBG Walter Waite, who now moves on to the finals. by TKO, and we'll be heading straight into the final for the Rex Deserti Championship belt. Nikolai Slick Nick Grosdev! And now, ladies and gentlemen, Let's head straight into our second half of our four-man tournament. In which the winner will be facing Nikolai Grosdev in the final for the championship belt. Introducing first, in the blue corner, weighing in at 76.7 kilos. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, holding a professional record of 8 wins with 3 losses. Representing DK MMA. Fighting out of Uzbekistan, Yakongir Bukharski Umayev. Uzbeki Yakongir Bukharski Umayev. Fighting out of BK MMA. 30 years old, stands five foot nine, and certainly one of the favorites in this tourney. And now introducing his opponent in the red corner. Weighing in at 74.9 kilos, he stands 5 feet 7 inches tall, holding a professional record of 7 wins, no losses. Representing KHK Bahrain, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, Abdulatip Goro Magomedov. This Dagestani native undefeated 7-0, 4 of those wins coming by means of the knockout. The rest were submissions, mostly rear naked chokes. Five foot seven, KHK Bahrain, tail of the tape. Comparable age, a bit of a height advantage for Yumaev. Everything else looks like a wash. Scheduled for three five minute rounds. Second half of the four man tournament here in Dubai. Yumaev. The black trunks with the blue taped gloves. Magomedov with the white trunks and the red taped white gloves. This, I would say, is the more dangerous of the draw out of the four man tournament. Nice heel catch. Oh, now the ground and pound from Yumayev already coming out very aggressively here in the first minute. Looking to pass Magomedov's guard. Magomedov has great submissions, but he gets ragdolled 
by Umayev, who is just putting on a ground and pound clinic. Magomedov just trying to tighten up and try to trap those arms and regroup. It's just the pace that Umayev has set coming in. Frantic first minute for sure, and now Magomedov doing a good job of slowing things down. Looking for the triangle. Umayev is wise to it. Umayev looking to posture up. Goes low, then high. Working the body, then going upstairs. Abdullah Deep Magomedov, originally from Dagestan, now fighting out of KHK Bahrain. Finds himself in early trouble here, having to fight off his back. Looks like he has a nice aggressive guard though. He's fishing for submissions. Good butterfly guard. Now into the half guard, but look at Yumayev go to work with the full mount now. Looking to posture up, let those hands go. He has a nasty ground and pound. Makes you wonder who Yumayev lost to with that eight and three record. Now with the high mount. Trying to get that arm for the arm bar. He's going for the arm bar submission. Tapping out is Magomedov. Beautiful work from Yakongir Bukowski Umayev, who advances to the finals in the four man tournament here in Dubai. Amazing work from the Uzbeki native. And finally, he cracks a smile. He's going to the finals to face Nikolai Sliknik Grozdev. What a fight that should be. Here you see the pace he set coming out right away. Very aggressive, slamming Magomedov like a rag doll. We have a winner by submission. We're due to an armbar in round one. Two minutes, 35 seconds. Yakongir Umayev! And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, in the blue corner, Weighing in at 75.1 kilos. He stands five feet, 11 inches tall, holding a professional record of 19 wins, 10 losses, one draw. Representing Nova Uniao Manus, fighting out of Brazil. Presenting Alexandre Leclerc Ribeiro. Alexandre Leclerc Ribeiro. Five foot 11, good height for a welterweight. This fight's at 165. Will most likely have a good reach advantage over his opponent as well. 74 inch reach, looking very intense here this evening. He's currently 19 and 10, 30 years old. Fighting out of Nova Unyu Manaus. Getting his final equipment check here in the beautiful Intercontinental in capital of Emirate of Dubai. And now introducing the challenger in the red corner, weighing in at 74.6 kilos. He stands five feet, seven inches tall, holding a professional record of 15 wins, five losses, one draw. Representing full house, fighting out of Brazil, Eduardo Machina de Dor, Souza! Three five minute rounds, here we go. Ibeto in the black and gold trunks with the gloves that have blue tape as he fights out of the blue corner. Gets the kick going right away, Ibeto. And Souza is in the white trunks. Hard to miss with that red mohawk. Which I might add goes quite well with his gloves. It's kind of a gold, white, and red theme here in Dubai. <laughs> Throwing a little black there, the black and gold of Hibero. And the colors are popping here in the desert. Hibero bringing a little bit of offense. Measured each other for about 30 seconds. Now they seem to be letting it go, especially Leklek. I looked up the translation for Leklek, L-E-K-L-E-K, -E -E and it exactly translates to Leklek. 
So your guess is as good as mine. If I had to pick one of the nicknames that I wanted to go with out of the two, I think I'm going with Pain Machine. You could see the thickness of Eduardo Souza. What he gives up in height, he makes up for in power. More than half of his wins have come by KO or TKO. And you would think that he battle was the submission artist with that kind of lanky, Hoist Gracie type look, uh, long limbed. But he's got about a 40% knockout ratio himself. So not too shabby for the Brazilian. Oh, shin to shin, you know that hurts. That is when you just have to put on your best poker face when those shins crack up against each other, it's like two baseball bats. Not too much tissue preventing the damage. Sidekick attempt from Hibato. Good defense from Souza. Souza done, doing a good job of keeping his back to the center of the cage. Trying to be the ring general in there. It's been a little bit of a Back and forth, tit for tat, almost. Sometimes you fall into a rhythm. You let a little go, then you expect something back, and, it, and, it, and the fight takes on a life of itself, takes on a rhythm of itself. Right now, that with two minutes, little over two minutes to go in the opener, you can feel the rhythm starting to develop, a back and forth. These fighters had good respect for each other at the weigh-ins. There's no bad blood. And Hibeto trying to get those hands going, trying to close the distance. Another nice inside leg kick from Souza. Souza's been working the legs. And Hibeto's been working the diaphragm with those teep kicks. Bolo punch from Hibeto, but he is way outside. No one was claiming that it was a groin strike, Sosa. Sosa looks over to the referee like that was not a groin strike, and he betters like I didn't say it was. <laughs> one minute to go in round number one. It really, anybody's round, this is, this is stealable. If I'm either one of these welterweights, I'm going to do my best to dump my opponent. That's the last thing the judges are going to see. They're looking for something right now. Uh, this is almost impossible to judge as it is. And the takedown, almost as if Souza heard me. The big, trying to go for dump number two. Ibeto grabs the cage. Referee didn't catch it. And that's a big momentum stopper. Ibeto grabbing that cage stops that takedown. You can see why if you do it twice, you're going to lose a point. Oh, get some height, but great balance from Hibato. Great takedown defense from Tech Tech, but finally gets dumped on his forehead. Back up to his feet at the 10 second warning. Hibato with an outside leg kick. And round number one is in the record books. Welcome back inside the Intercontinental in the capital of the Emirate of Dubai for Centurion Fight Championship, Rex Deserti CFC 11. The Brazilians are in there right now as we speak. In between rounds, there you see Alexandre Leclerc Hibero. Had an okay round, had a couple of moments. They both fell into a pattern, back and forth pattern, you can see. Hibato's not thrilled with his first round, no question about that. And I doubt Eduardo Souza is thrilled with that first round. There you see Makina Dador, the pain machine, looking to let those hands go here in round number two. Don't forget later tonight, Nikolai Sliknik Grozdev versus Yakongir Bukaski Yumaev for the title. 
The welterweight title is at stake in our tournament this evening. And that will be coming up right after this fight. Should be a good one. Yakong Gear finished off Abdulatip Magomedov by armbar at 235 in round number one. And Slick Nick Grosdev got the ground and pound TKO over Gerson Pereira to advance. Two great fighters meeting in the cage right after this match. Both of these Brazilians still to some degree in a bit of a feeling out process. Neither one has felt the freedom to let their hands fly, get some, you know, more than one or two punch or more than one or two kick combination. Really, perhaps respecting each other a little bit too much. At some point, you gotta let the hands go. You gotta trust your offense. It's what you've been training years for. Another minute ticked away. Straight right, but see these one punch at a time, not even a combination type of offense becomes very predictable. And both of these 170 pounders are able to move away from, there's a, a one, two from Souza but didn't follow it up with anything. A shot. Nice outside leg kick. They're starting to jaw it up a little bit. Maybe they're both frustrated because they both wanted to counter fight here tonight. And that's, that's when you can have, frankly, a snoozer. If you come in here and, you, and you're completely intent on counter fighting no matter what happens, and your opponent feels the same way, you never really get it going for obvious reasons. Both of these Brazilians know how to take their opponent out. They both have plenty of KOs and plenty of submission wins. Beto, 19 and 10. And Souza, 15 and 5. Trying to get those hands going. Here at the two minute and 30 second mark of the second round. Let's take a look at our social media tags, United Fight Alliance, for all things combat sports. You can also check us out online, unitedfightalliance.com. Go to our television schedule for our full lineup. Flying knee attempt from Hibato. Two minutes to go in round two. Still with the one punch common, uh, the, the one punch combos, but I, I can't even say combo. It's just it's uh, here. I'll punch you. You punch me. Hibato taking his eye off his opponent. Not advised. Now kind of trips up against the cage, trying to circle away from Souza, but he's circling right into that right. He's circling into the power. Left hook from Souza, kind of a left-right combo from Souza. Stiff left jab, that's another thing I haven't seen Hibeto do too much. When you got that kind of a reach advantage, 74 inches over 68, you got a half a foot reach advantage. Why is that left jab not being stuck in Souza's face nonstop? It's gonna throw everything Souza does off. Spinning back kick, and Souza calls it as a groin strike below the belt. Referee didn't see it that way. Souza looks none Worse for the wear. I don't see Beto's been going in and out of orthodox and southpaw. Hasn't really done much to throw Souza off. I mean, Souza, as I see it right now, gets the squeaker just based on he's pressing the action. He's bringing the offense to Hiberto. 
couple of quick takedowns in the first round, right at the end of the round. Not doing much here in round two, however, other than at least pressing his case and now showing that he's got cardio. Well, that's great. Use the cardio in the fight. He's doing push-ups now. Here's the highlights. Not a ton of them. That was a nice straight right from Hibato. Deep kick, but left right from Souza as the counter fighter. So really anybody's fight here going into the third round on my very unofficial scorecard. I've got Souza up 20 to 18. Translate that coach and I think you're gonna hear what the heck are you doing with these one punch and two punch combinations. It's the third round and the tournament title fight when we return. Welcome back to Dubai, everybody. Jordan J. Adams, United Fight Alliance. Getting a good look right now at Makina Dador, the pain machine, Eduardo Dador Souza, and his opponent, Alexandre Leclecibero. They're having a moderate fight here. There's no other way to put it. They've been just trading, almost like an agreement to trade. Uh, Eduardo has got this fight on my card 20 to 18 it's his to lose and a lot of respect there maybe just a little too much i'd like to see them take their foot off the brake a little bit here don't forget stay with us don't go anywhere we do have the title fight right after this one nicolay slick nick grows dev you saw what he can do with that ground and pound win over gerson Pereira. Facing Yakongir Bukowski Umayev. And you saw his quick armbar submission over a very tough Abdulatip Magomedov. Uh, and that was in the first round. So two very, very dangerous 165 pounders fighting in the tournament final right after this match. Back in the cage with the Brazilians. Souza on the left with the red mohawk and the white trunks. Hibeto with the black and gold trunks. They both have knockout capability and submission capability. However, neither one of these welterweights have shown any inclination to go to the ground. A couple of takedown attempts at the end of the first round for Souza, and Hibeto had very good takedown defense. He was like a cat, get right back on his feet. Maybe that took a little bit of the enthusiasm for the ground game out of Souza's sails. He uh, had the wind taken out of his sails when Kibeta was able to get to his feet over and over again on those takedown attempts in the first round. Second round, not a ton of highlights. You didn't see my truck feeding me too many highlights to show you at the beginning of this round. That's not a good sign. But you got to give respect to two warriors who are willing to get in the cage against another animal who's going to do their level best to make you go to sleep. Now, Souza starting to show a little bit of life. Threatens the Superman punch, but doesn't pull the trigger. Outside leg kick fake from Hibeto. I can't help but wonder if Hibeto might be hurt. He may be nursing an injury. He's just never been this stoic, never been this static. So you can't help but wonder if um, he's nursing some past injury and it's keeping him from pulling the trigger. He's got great combinations, great Muay Thai, but unable to implement it here tonight. Coming up on the two-minute mark of the third and final round. Tournament title fight coming up right after this. Sosa's tried to close the distance a couple times. There's that jab we were talking about in the second round we'd like to see more of. Despite Hibero being shy with his jab, he has had a good defense on the time Souza has bum-rushed him. 
He's gotten his hands, keeps his hands up nice and high. And there's been a lot of punches to the sides of his forearms. But not a ton to his face. Neither one of these fighters hurting each other here tonight. That doesn't mean either one of them isn't hurting. Most fighters walk around with injuries. Spinning back kick, missing the mark. One minute to go in the fight. Really, this fight is up for grabs. Who wants it more? Win a fight in Dubai. Flying knee, kind of lackluster. Big overhand right attempt from a different zip code. Thirty seconds to go. Let hands fly. Let's go, boys. Outside leg kick from Hibeto. Souza trying to track him down. Ten seconds to go. Half-hearted attempt at a takedown. Barrow stuffs it. This one goes to the record books. I got Souza winning it. Unanimous decision, 30-27. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by unanimous decision in the record. Keen at the door climbs to 16 and five. Alexandre Hibeto drops to 19 and 11. When we come back, the tournament title fight. Stay with us. It is now time to see who will be the king of the desert. This is the final of our four-man tournament and the main event of the evening. Three rounds for the undisputed Centurion champion of the world. Introducing first. In the blue corner, weighing in at 76.7 kilos. He stands five feet, nine inches tall, holding a record of nine wins, three losses. Representing TK MMA from Uzbekistan, Yakongir Bukharski Yumaev. Yakongir Bukharski Yumaev, nine and three, BK MMA. He got to the finals by arm barring Abdulatip Magomedov in the first round. We saw that fight earlier tonight. And he is a very dangerous submission artist, but he also has good hands, good combinations, and a lot of power in both hands. Get his final equipment check. Safe to say his biggest fight of his career. Taking and place now, here in Dubai. Introducing his opponent in the red corner, weighing in at 73.5 kilos. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, holding a professional record of six wins, one loss. Representing SBG Ireland, fighting out of Ireland, Nikolai Slick Nick Grosden. Nikolay Slick Nick grows deaf, and boy, does he look ready. Coming in animal style. Five foot eight, 163 pounds. Fighting out of SBG Dublin, Ireland. He got to the finals by grounding and pounding Gerson Pereira. Picking up his sixth win. Very, very excited to be in the finals with Yakon Gear, Bukowski, Umayev. And both of these guys have what it takes to have a long career in the sport. And there is some intensity as the fighters make their way to their perspective corners.
first round of the championship match when we return after this very short break. Tournament championship fight. Nikolai Slicknick grows Dev. Stepping to the center of the cage, he has the white trunks on. Yakon Gir Bukowski Yumayev has the black trunks on. This is for the first belt ever given out by Centurion FC. Both of these guys are outstanding welterweights. Stiff left from Yumayev. Outside leg kick, beautiful work. Already stumbling down goes Grozdev. Pulling, pulling guard for the guillotine is Yumanev. Yumanev's going for the guillotine. Now for the side, he's trying to get that right arm in. So far, only the left arm. Grozdev is moving in the right direction. Grozdev out of trouble unless Yumaev can get that right hand in there. I do not believe his hands are clasped. And his right hand is on the hip of Grozdev. So Grozdev is out of trouble trying to get that right leg out now for side control for Grozdev. Yumaev has his right leg figure forward over the right leg of Grozdev preventing him from freeing it up to sling it over and get full mount now. Grozdev fishing for either side control or full mount. He's got knee on belly now. Now he's gonna get side control. Great position for Grozdev. Side control for Slick Nick. Now going for the choke himself. Knee from Yumaev. Back to the center of the cage they go. Back and forth action. Stiff right hand rocks Grosdev. He walked right into the straight right, and he's in trouble, and he is on the run. Trying to hook the heel of Yumaev. Yumaev letting his hands go. Big right hand knocks Grosdev out. He is unconscious. Nikolai Slick Nick is done. This fight is over. Yakon Gir, Bukowski, Yumaev wins the first belt in Centurion FC history. Beautiful fight, beautiful work for the Uzbeki native. What a fight. BKMMA now congratulating their protege. And he will be draped in the flag for sure this evening. Biggest fight of his young career. And here, the beginning of the end. Watch the straight right. Grosdev walked. First, it was the left. That was earlier. And that was when you might have decided to pull guard and go for the guillotine. Here's the straight right. The left hook sets it up. This is already later in trouble. Grosdev was already rocked from the right that he walked into. He's going for the heel, but he gets caught by that right, and that right knocks him out. Good stoppage by the referee. One more time, fishing for the heel. That right really finished him off. That's, that last right was unnecessary, but it is incumbent upon the fighter to keep punching until the referee stops him. Let's make this one official. The winner by knockout, and is now the king of the desert and Centurion champion of the world, Yakongir Bukowski Yumaev. So Yakongir Yumaev climbs to 10 and three. Nikolai Grozdev falls to six and two. You could see the absolute heartbreak in his face. And now the golden confetti in Dubai, they're the belt. The first Centurion FC belt ever awarded goes to Yakongir Bukowski Yumaev here in the beautiful city of Dubai. And he gets the parade now with his native flag over his shoulders. The parade of glory for our partner, founder and president of Centurion FC, Mr. Roberto Gallo. I'm Jordan J. Adams saying we'll see you next time on United Fight Alliance.